will start with the review of <coughs> commas. Last time you had all received a table like this. It was given beforehand so that you could study at home. Because all this is not difficult to understand at one stroke. So I hope you have gone through <coughs> this table. We will just go through again and see if you see the logic, the first column is type of elements and their rank. That comma will always come between two elements. It will come between two words or between two clauses. So, if those elements are of equal rank, then the first half of the table applies. And if they are of unequal rank, then the lower half of the table applies. So, we start with equal rank and whether it is unconditional or conditional. So, this says unconditional that is syntactic. Syntax is the structure of language which is independent of the meaning. It is independent of content. So, these uses of commas in the first three <coughs> big boxes are unconditional means regardless of what is the content. If the type of content is like this, we have to use it. So, first is by convention <coughs> between two or more elements. So, first is name and title. So, Professor Isaac who was Dr. Fatek's teacher, comma PhD will visit because name and title have to be separated by a comma. Then next address, in address you have different elements, you have say building them name of building, then name of road, <coughs> name of the locality, name of the town. All these have to be separated to indicate that they are different categories of words. So, Kresit, comma IIT, comma Pawai, comma Mumbai 76. Between the name of the town and the local postal code or if you have pin code, there is no punctuation used. Similarly, within pin code there is no punctuation. The six digits you have to write sequentially. Then geographical names, Krishit is in Mumbai, comma India. Then dates, August 15, 1947. Now, if you, why do we give a comma here after 15? Because otherwise 15 and 1947 could get mixed you could read it either way, but there is no comma between August and 15, because one is a number, the other is a <coughs> alpha. So, it is obvious that they do not belong together, but the counter example no comma is 5 January 2013. So, if you alternate alpha and numeric, then you do not have to give comma. So, with this version of date, you do not need commas anywhere. And we write 5 January 2013, not 5th January. If we are referring to the date in some sentence that it was January the 5th, then we use 5th. Otherwise, while writing a date, we just write plain the number, <coughs> what is called the cardinal number, that is 1, 2, 3, etcetera. And 5th is an ordinal, it shows order in a series. Then numbers, we have to separate long numbers by punctuation, so that reading becomes easier. So, the first style is 91,23,456, this is Indian style, that is after the first thousand we give commas after every two, because we have lakh, crore, <coughs> etcetera. But international style is after every three digits because you go in thousand, million, billion, etcetera. Now, here it is given that telephone number should be broken up with hyphens, because this is not one long 10 digit or 12 digit number. Actually, numbers refer to different things. It is not a number at all, though it looks like a number. So, we, we give area code 022 hyphen 2576, which is the exchange code hyphen 7900, 7900, 
which is the local code within the exchange. So, even while writing mobile numbers, people write any which way. So, mobile numbers are 10 digits. They should be written as 2, 3 and 5 digits. The first two digits refer to the operator whether it is Airtel, <coughs> Reliance or anything. The second three digits is the exchange code of the operator and last five digits <coughs> is your telephone number within that exchange. So, mobile number should also always be written like this with hyphenation. It is easier to understand and it is difficult to get confused with this. Then next is the reference type is coordinating conjunctions. This comes exactly between two equal elements. The first one could come <coughs> between two or more elements. So, these coordinating conjunctions you know from English language right and but or not for so and yet. Now, all these examples are given. The coordinating conjunction is joining two clauses over here. So, after the first clause which has its own meaning you put a comma to indicate that the clause has ended and before the coordinating conjunct conjunctions the comma comes and after coordinating conjunction the next clause comes. So, buy now and pay later with no comma buy now pay later the and is understood or sequence is understood. So, for short sentences sometimes you do not need a coordinating conjunction if the meaning is understood. So, this is all between when the equal elements are clauses for each for each coordinating conjunctions you have examples here. Then the third type is called serial comma that is when you have a long list of equal elements which are phrases or words. Many people tend to write this and with the what is called open punctuation, <coughs> there is a tendency to avoid all punctuation. What is the difference between this? and this. Is there a difference in meaning? Right and A has nothing to do with them. What is relationship between A and B or A and C is not clear from the comma. Only it says A is a separate element, but A could be standing alone. But the lower one what is the meaning? How are they related? This is equivalent to A and B and C. This comma before the and indicates that all previous commas are to be replaced by and. So, this is a short form with three elements you can write the comma twice. If you had ten elements you cannot write the comma. Uh, write the and 10 times. So, this one signals that whatever is the coordinating conjunction same is applicable to the whole previous series. So, if this is or then all these are or it is a or b or c. This is a short form for that that is why this comma should not be missed. This <coughs> comma in UK is called the Oxford comma. because Oxford University recommended this originally. In US, it is called the Harvard comma and generically it is called 
the serial comma. between 3 and more elements. So, always make sure that you do not miss this comma with any coordinating conjunction. Then next we come to the conditional or semantic elements where the meaning is important. So, first is this is a bit tricky to understand, so we will spend a little time on this. So, this <coughs> accurate detailed analysis means it is accurate analysis and detailed analysis. Both these are applicable individually to analysis, you can hide one and still the meaning is complete, the meaning is <coughs> taken together. But if you wanted to say inaccurate detailed analysis versus accurate detailed analysis, where detailed analysis is common, but you are further modifying it by whether it is accurate or inaccurate, then you do not have to give comma. So, if you are saying say <coughs> white metal cup, then it is a white cup and a metal cup, but if you want to say white metal cup versus black metal cup, then you do not have to give a comma. So, technically we so this analysis is a noun right what is detailed an adjective. what is accurate is also an adjective. If I remove this, now what is this? This is not looking at the noun directly, huh? adverb correct. So, adverb normally we learn that adverb is what modifies a verb, but adverb can modify another adjective or adverb can modify another adverb. So, to indicate that this is adverb or adjective the comma serves the purpose and the meaning can change. So, I think remaining things we would not go through if you have any difficulty any time, <coughs> we can discuss. So, now we will <coughs> go through some theory of written language and second assignment is distributed, no? after that we will do the second assignment. Over the last three classes, <coughs> when we started and when we asked whether anybody is interested in proofreading, no hand went up. Maybe one reason was you did not know what proofreading was, though you intuitively know, but you may not be knowing that that is the technical word for it. But now, after three sessions, you might have realized <coughs> that though it is not obvious, proofreading matters. So, why is it that when it comes to <coughs> spoken communication or for public speaking all hands went up, everybody wants to be a public speaker, but nobody wants to be a good writer it seems. So, this is because we tend to think that spoken language and written language 
are interconvertible. And if you learn good speech, <coughs> you will automatically learn good writing. That is what we presume. We assume that writing is just for notating externally, so that we do not have to memorize things. Otherwise, it is just <coughs> notated speech. That is how we come to believe. But if we see how we learn spoken and written language, from 0 to 1 year of age, a child only produces indistinct sounds normally. It will produce some sounds, but there is no meaning or logic to it and they are not sounds of language. But the child is listening all the time. Only thing is it cannot express itself, it cannot produce the sounds, it does not have the motor ability to do that. Approximately at one year the child will speak its first word and <coughs> you must have experienced in your family, whenever a child speaks its first word, <coughs> there is kind of celebration, because then the child really start becoming a human being. What distinguishes human beings from animals? that animals do not have language. So, the child starts acquiring language and then the child picks up very fast. Just by listening, you do not have to teach the child, you have to allow it to be around you. It will listen to the adult and it will figure out whole structure of the language. You do not, we do not teach grammar to children, we do not teach pronunciation. They will pick up depending on what the surrounding people are doing. Between 1 to 3 years of age, child has mastered the complete structure of the language. Even if adults make mistake in speaking, it accounts for those mistakes and it derives the structure of the language. Its vocabulary may be limited or its knowledge may be limited, but it actually has full command of language at the age of 3 and you must have experience with children that even complex thoughts they will try to express and they will try to understand. And this is normally your mother tongue. You must have heard Dr. Patak insisting <coughs> that why mother tongue is important, this is like your <coughs> operating system. So, your next language will be built on this. If this itself is not proper, your second, third language also will not be proper. This is why mother tongue is important. So, all this happens without any school, without any teacher, without any exam, without any technique. This normally happens in home. <coughs> we take this for granted, but unless this is done, the child is not ready for school. Schools get a child ready made, which we do not realize. The brain learns to recognize patterns in sounds during the first year. After that, the brain can hear sounds, but it cannot recognize patterns. This is a time window for the brain. Say so you must have read that nowadays there is insistence that you should get your child checked whether its hearing is proper. And the word deaf mute, deaf mute, a person who is deaf from early age is always mute. It can produce sounds, but it cannot speak. Even if by some operation you restore the he physical hearing, it will only hear noises, it cannot recognize patterns. That window is only within the first year, <coughs> where you can recognize the patterns and classify them as sounds of language. So, first the child acquires that, then it acquires the structure of the language and then nowadays Children start reading writing early, but the conventional age is 
six year <coughs> when you enter first standard. So the schools get the child ready. It already has knowledge of the language. And what the school does <coughs> is only teach write written language. So what we call literate starts after this. For this also there is a slot, maybe up to 12, 15 years of age. If somebody does not become literate within that, it is very difficult to pick up literacy later on, even if the person is intelligent. So, school education is really the key to literacy. If that is missed out in school, you cannot make up. Adult education, which everybody is trying to promote that people who have missed out, it is extremely difficult. They can only learn a few words and if you see their handwriting is like children, they do not pick up the skill. It is only in early age that we can pick up the skills. So, after this you must have remembered your childhood that from first standard onwards how step by step you had to build up first simple sentences that then complex sentences, then complex thoughts, paragraphs, story writing, letter writing etcetera. So, written language has to be acquired step by step. So, we are born to speak and hear it is nature's gift, but we are not born to write. If left to ourselves, we will never learn written language. So, it is not just writing is a reflection of speech, it is a different medium altogether. So, what is the difference between? Now, written language many people learn technically they can write using the script and we tend to think that everybody is equal, since they can write. Written language itself has two parts, one is you can call colloquial or natural. And second is you can call systematic or refined. In India, this was called Prakrit and this was called Sanskrit. Prakrit literally means natural, that is you do not make any special effort, it is like eating natural foods, you do not process. Sanskrit means processed, literally it means refined or processed. So, now there is no Sanskrit left even abroad, <coughs> their classical languages are gone, <coughs> Latin Greek, nobody stud, uh, studies Latin Greek to become a scholar. So, now the Prakrits, which were English, German, etcetera, have taken over the role of <coughs> classical languages. In Greek, they had to have, they had, this was Demotic Greek. The demos means people and this was called hieratic Greek, that is <coughs> language of the priests. So, in any society you will find there are always two levels of language. Now, there is apparently only one level, so we tend to think that everybody is literate. But now, also there is a refined level which now is called edited English. And what we are trying to achieve? is that we have natural English, we are trying to achieve <coughs> competence in edited English. So, edited English is used in academia, <coughs> in all publications, in commercial publications, in industry, government, any organization, any formal communication has to be in edited English. And since you will be associated with all these organizations, whether you are in government, academia, <laughs> industry, social work, whatever, whatever you will be communicating in writing should be in edited English. So, then you will belong to the class, <coughs> which is of equals and you will be taken seriously. So, first is you have to master your own language and then why Suppose you can write correctly, then why learn proof editing? 
if you can write correct the first time around. Because you will be have, <coughs> handling tens or hundreds of other people who will not be as refined as you. Otherwise, they would not be working for you. So, and you can't write everything yourself. You will expect them to write, you will expect them to produce reports, etc., and you will have to go through them. So, you will have to know proof editing, etc., to guide them to improve their language. So, it is not only for your, even if you achieve perfection for yourself, you will need to guide other people who are working for you, so that they improve their command of language. So, like any art, like you have pop music, for which you do not need any training. You have some natural musical sense, from that you can make out. It has simple rhythms, simple melodies. <coughs> Against this, there is classical music. So, pop music is a natural taste, because we have natural attraction for music. But classical music is an acquired taste. You do not get it automatically, you have to listen for hundreds of hours and slowly you start understanding what is happening. Similarly, edited English is an acquired skill. You cannot just be literate and become <coughs> proficient in that. You have to build it up and you can you have to go on building up. Like last time when we were reviewing, uh, reviewing the <coughs> proof editing assignment, somebody pointed out that the hyphen should, should, should have been after L or before L. So, I gave an answer which turned out to be correct, that if the word is to be broken at the end of a line and if the word consists of many parts like suffix and the root, then it should be broken at that. If there is no obvious <coughs> division of the word, then it should be broken on the syllable, that is unspoken. But first priority is for the structure of the word, the structure should not be broken. So, this gives a theory that why it takes so long and why we have to take so much effort to learn edited English. So, already that is why we have done some measurements and we will see that throughout this course when the assignments build up, you will realize that with the symbols that you know and the experience that you have, you will keep on improving, you will see that you will find more and more errors and you will learn to read to find errors. And then when you write your assignments, etcetera or reports, their quality will improve, that is a real payoff. Finally, the real outcome of this course should be that your writing should improve. <coughs> By the time you finish your M Tech or PhD, what your final work is should be if you people read that they should find it easy to read and they should admire you. So, this is only a start we have just launched you on the journey. So, now I think we will take up assignment 2, <coughs> you can correct it and then we will immediately show you the master also. It is only one and a half page. This is the previous assignments you must have wondered because they were all artificial. This one is natural, this is actually somebody's draft which we have taken as it is and given to you. And this is how the matter will come to you, this is the level at which the matter will come to you. So, go ahead, we will have say about 10 minutes and if we get time, we will go through the model solution. <coughs>